Hello teachers, the purpose of this video is to review how to use Quizlet to create study materials for your students. One of the very cool things about Quizlet is it is free. In addition, you can browse study sets that have been already been created by other teachers. However, this particular option is not free. In order to see what other teachers have posted, you do have to get a special a special account that costs $25 a year, which may well be worth it, but that is ultimately your choice. Today, though, the focus is going to be on what you can do on Quizlet without having to pay for an account. And it's very, very easy to use. Simply create a study set by clicking on here. And next thing you want to do is create a title for your study set. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to simply title this vocabulary. I can change its visibility, for example, if I currently set for visible to everyone, but I can go ahead and change it for certain classes, people with a password, just me, etc. Likewise, I can change the editing rights. Only me can currently edit this, but I can also allow people with a password or certain classes. You may add a description to the study, study set, which is completely optional. In this case, this study set is used as a demonstration for creating study guides for students. And you go ahead and hit save. Over here on the left, you go ahead and enter in your term. Make certain that you choose your language, though. And in this case, let's say that the term is going to be mitochondria. And so the terms go into this column. Definitions go into this column. Again, choose the language. Over here, you can choose to auto-define. You can add a voice recording, or you can add an image. Let's see what happens when we ask it to auto-define. It gives us a wide variety of definitions that we can choose from, or we may go ahead and type in our own. So for this one, an organelle found in large numbers of most cells in which biochemical processes of respiration energy production occur. That seems sufficient, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that one. So right away, I have a ready-made definition. For images, I'm going to click here. And you can go through the images and see which one you like the most. And this one looks pretty good, so I will select this one. This can be very useful for students who are visual learners to have that picture in there. And you keep going with your various terms. Here, Beethoven and German composer of instrumental music. That's good. And let's get a picture of Beethoven. That's good right there. And you just keep going. And if you start running out of words, you can click plus. If you start running out of space, you can hit plus to add additional words to your study set. All right. So in this situation, Frosty is the word. We got a picture of Frosty the snowman. But looking at the definitions, None of them are what I like. So I'm going to go in and type my own definition here. And that's sufficient for this example. So we now have three words with three definitions and three images. 
I'm going to go ahead and click on Create, which is available both up here and down here. And the study set is now available. It provides me with a link here that I can share with others, either uh, share with a class such as through Google, Google Classroom, or I can add it to a folder, share on Facebook, Twitter, etc. There are a number of ways in which students can use this. For example, you can go ahead and click on flashcards, and students can use this to go ahead and prepare for an exam. And all they have to do is click to flip it over and it reveals the word. You can start over at the end, study again with terms showing, or study with a both, both sides showing on the cards. Clicking on Learn here, this is a more complicated way of um, students studying, in which they have to be able to type in what the answers are. And therefore, it's probably much more engaging, much more demanding of their cognitive processes. But of course, they might get the answer correct, but misspell, in which case it would be recorded as incorrect. But that can be helpful too, and that it can um, help teach them the correct way of spelling items. There is a speller version which students type what they hear. which could be good for your auditory learners. Frosty. Mitochondria. So again, another way in which students can learn. There's also a test. Now, you can determine what question types you want, like written, matching, multiple choice, true, false. You can determine how it starts, like with a term, definition, or both. And every time you hit create new test, it randomly changes things. And you can go ahead and print it. Generally speaking, um, I would not use this for grading because students can easily look up the answers online while they're working on this. As you can see, this is um, one way in which a student can randomly test themselves. So Quizlet is very, very effective in terms of creating study guides as complex or as simple as you wish to help students learn the material. And you're provided a link that you can share with students. That way they can access the study set and practice either in the classroom or at home. There are also some games here, such as Scatter in which they have to drag the corresponding items onto each other to make them disappear. So you're basically matching the definition or characteristic with the term. And my students used to have a great deal of fun with this, trying to beat each other's times, so they would get competitive with it. There is also another game on here called Gravity. This I'm less of a fan of. You can select a difficulty level, and if you want to start with a term definition, or if you want random, you hit let's go, start game, and you have to type in the term as, it come, as the information comes down. So as you can see, if it's um, 
lengthy definition. Can be difficult to win. So generally speaking, I much prefer to it's not gravity isn't my favorite part of this. But go with what your personal preference is. So Quizlet to round things up here to summarize things is a very powerful tool that can be used to create study guides that are engaging, interactive, and powerful with your students. The complexity is ultimately up to you, but many students can greatly benefit from this because you can set things that so that way it's never presented in the exact same way twice. If you have any questions regarding using Quizlet, please see me. Thank you and have a great day.